Hi everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we're making something that's so fun. It is probably the most popular design that is currently out in the sewing world. Everyone is making something like this and I'm so excited to make it today. Today we are making the spring roll pouch and this pattern comes to us from Love You Sew. So this is actually the first time we're doing a Love You Sew pattern on the channel and you guys you're going to love this. It looks so basic, doesn't it? Look at it. It's just this beautiful little rectangle pouch. It's so cute. The material that we're using to make this bag today is coming to us from the monthly bag making B Club subscription box and in it you're going to have everything you need to make the bag you see right here. Now this monthly subscription is a mystery box meaning that every month you'll get it if you're signed up and you'll have all the material you need to make that month's pattern and this is the mystery box for June. However if you're not a part of the subscription box no worries whatsoever you can still go grab the pattern and use your own material to make this today. But let me just let me just show you because I know it's like Okay, it's cute. It's got a handle. It's a rectangle. It's got a couple of zipper pulls. Look at these zipper pulls. Aren't those adorable? They're like little acorns. Also, if you have the subscription box, let me know in the comments below if you can figure out what the theme of this is. Okay, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody because it's, it's, it's like a, a bounded bag. I mean, not binding, no binding. Uh, what I mean is like, it's an inspired bag from a very popular character. Comment down below if you know what character it is. But let me just show you. I'm gonna open it up. The zippers go all the way to the side like this. And watch this. This is the best part, guys. Watch. Oh, look at that. It opens flat like this. Like it becomes so big. It's like a, it's like a, what's that, uh, that, that thing in the Doctor Who? Like the TARDIS or whatever, where it's like bigger on the inside. That's how this feels. It's so big on the inside. And so today I'm gonna walk you through how to do this clear center pocket how to do an elastic pocket and then also a slip pocket. Now the pattern actually has four pocket options. It's like a zipper pocket, it has these little like elastic things. There's a lot of options in this pattern. However, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm going with elastic pocket, slip pocket, and then just to have a little bit of fun, we're gonna do the clear pocket inside. So you can see this is a great bag for everybody. It is summer break over here. So if you have family members traveling, if you have a spouse that is traveling for work all the time, this is a great travel bag. This is great for toiletries. It's great for all your necessities. It's great for crafts. That's what we've been using ours for over here. Fantastic as a craft bag, makeup bag, everything bag. I mean, it's just like, it's just so cool. Look, it's like, look, I'm just a little boxy pouch. No, I'm not. I open up. So before we get started, I wanna talk about material for just a moment. In all three of the versions I've made so far, I have used wax canvas, but the thickness of the wax canvas does vary. So in the subscription box, you kind of have like a medium weight wax canvas and it's great. However, you can see it can be smushed around. If you want this to be very sturdy and not squishy, then I do suggest you add some sort of a sew and foam, maybe a fusible fleece, maybe even a Decoville light. Add a little bit of stabilizer only to the main exterior panel, okay? That's all you need, just the main outer exterior panel, add some stabilizer to that and you'll be able to hold the structure really well. So you can see this is like a medium weight wax canvas with a water resistant lining. I also use the wax canvas for most of the inside too. You can see the sides, the bottoms, things like that. Here's another version and this would be, I, I feel like this is a more lightweight wax canvas and it, so it is pretty droopy, especially if you have harder hardware, you know. And then this version over here, this is actually a much stiffer wax canvas. And so you can see the shape holds more on its own. So think about what you're using. If you're using a cork for the exterior, I think you'll be fine without interfacing. Just try to think about that. I wouldn't use just a quilt cotton for the exterior and then that's it. I would definitely, if you wanna use quilt cotton, add some stabilizer to it. Decoville light would be great, I think. So thank you so much to Love You So for not only allowing me to use your pattern on my channel, thank you also for participating in this month's Bee Box. Every single month we have so much fun picking a pattern, picking a designer, working with them, picking out all the materials, and then sending it off. It's so much fun. If you haven't checked out the Bee Box, go ahead and do that. I'll have a link down below. It is run through Wonderground Fabrics, which you guys know is one of our favorite everything suppliers here on the channel, from tools to fabrics to notion, I mean everything. Gabby sells everything. If you're new to the Ogre's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down in the comment section. Again, do you know what this is inspired by? So I'll show you, here's this version here that I did, and then here's another version. So you can see I switched things up around a little bit. Maybe a waterproof canvas on the top, maybe a wax canvas for the handle. You can switch things around, but I'll show you on the inside of this, I used a lot more of that lining. 
and you have plenty of the material in the box to switch this around however you'd like. So let me know down below if you know what this is inspired by. Let me know. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to give it away. All right, guys, let's get started. So for this pattern, you're going to need a half of a yard of exterior material. Today I'm using wax canvas. This pattern is great for wax canvas. It has a nice firm durability structure without having to add a lot to it. For the lining, I'm actually going to be using this water resistant canvas. Water resistant canvas is great because you don't have to add interfacing to it and it keeps, it keeps a good structure, but it's still lightweight. And then I'm going to have a little bit of clear vinyl for the inside pocket, but you don't have to use clear vinyl if you don't want to. You could still stick with your lining material. Quilt cotton is also an option here. Just anything you use quilt cotton for, make sure you add some woven interfacing to it. The pattern also suggests you use some sort of a fleece or a batting or a foam and, and using that extra stabilizer is going to give it perfect structure. You'll notice the one we make today is kind of scrunchy. So if you want to have it so that it just keeps its shape perfectly, add some sort of other stabilizer. However, I'm not going to be adding that today. So here's the hardware for today. We're going to have a 22 inch long zipper. This is for the exterior of the bag and then two zipper pulls. These zipper pulls are so cute. They're like little acorns. They are pretty big, but they're very cute. And then a smaller zipper, which is eight inches long. This is for that center zip pocket, a zipper pull to go with that. Both of these zippers are number five zippers and number five zipper pulls. And then we have a few different rivets. We have a couple of medium sized rivets for the handle and then a couple of small rivets for the pocket. The small rivets are completely optional. The handle one could be optional too, but it is a lot easier to rivet that handle in place than it will be to sew it. And then I have the bag tag for today, which is so cute. It says no case too big, no case too small, very cute. And then we have a small piece of elastic here. This is a 10 inch length piece of elastic and it's because we're gonna be doing an elastic pocket. If you don't wanna do the elastic pocket, then you don't need the elastic. All right, here's a bunch of the other stuff. I have some paper tape. This is a Kimberbell tape. This is great for holding things in place. Uh, you can easily sew over it. Might not be necessary, but it's always nice to have on hand. Then I have some quarter inch double-sided tape. This is a wash away double-sided tape, meaning I can easily sew over it and it's not gonna gum up my needle. Always a healthy supply of clips. I have my one inch by six inch ruler. I have a seam ripper and stiletto combo here. And then I also have my own little stiletto that I keep by the sewing machine. A lighter is gonna be really helpful at cleaning up any little loose ends. I have a silver marking pen. And then I also have an air racing marking pen. This metal contraption here is my turning tool. This is my favorite turning tool. I highly recommend it. For the top thread today, I'll be using a Tex 35 weight thread. And for the bobbin thread, I have this Guterman thread. The needle I'm using is a Microtex 8012. And then I have my rivet press with the dies so that I can set those rivets. Now let's go through our pattern pieces. This is pattern piece number one. This is the main body. This is gonna be your exterior material. If you're using woven interfacing or sew-in stabilizer, you're gonna also wanna cut pieces from that as well. But since I'm just using wax canvas today, I only have one cut and it's of this here. Next up, we have the handle. And you'll see I'm kind of mixing up the pieces here from what I did the first time. So the first time I used the wax canvas for the handle, today I'm gonna try using the water resistant canvas for the handle just to give it a different look. Also, it depends on your rivet size, but with the wax canvas exterior and the wax canvas handle and all the layers and stuff like that, you need to make sure you have a rivet that is going to be able to snap shut all those layers. So I'm gonna use this as the handle today just to try it out. And then we have the wings. These go on the side of the bag. You're gonna need two cuts of each material and make sure that they are mirrored. So if we have wax canvas, like I would do in the box today, it doesn't really matter how you cut them because wax canvas is good on the front and the back, it's the same. However, if you have a fabric that clearly has a front side and a back side, you're gonna cut two with the template one way and then flip the template upside down and cut two more that way. Next up, we have two cuts of material for the base and two cuts of material for the front and the back. This can be the lining material or it can be your exterior material. Since my lining material is pretty thin, I'm gonna be using the exterior material to add some structure. So if you're using foam or fleece, use whatever you want for this. You can use some quilt cotton even here and you'll be fine. However, since I'm not using the stabilizer, I'm trying to add structure wherever I can get it. And my wax canvas is just more structured than the water resistant canvas. So I'll be using that for most of the inside pieces today. Next up, we have our interior divider pocket and our interior divider pocket tabs. If you're using quilt cotton, water resistant canvas, any sort of regular material. You're gonna have four cuts of this, but since we're using clear vinyl, we just have two cuts. And then for the tabs, you're going to have two cuts of that. And then finally, the rest of our lining, we have four cuts here of our lining material. This is for the gusset. This is really cool on the sides. It looks so nice. And then we have two cuts for our slip pocket because those are the pocket options we're doing today. There's lots of pocket options, but we're doing the slip pocket on one side. And then the other side, we're doing the elastic pocket. So for the elastic pocket, we just have one cut of our lining material. 
So let's start with the handle. Take your handle cut and lay it wrong side up and then fold the long edges together, wrong sides together. And grab an iron and just press along that edge and then open it back up and fold the long raw edges up to meet that middle pressed line that you just made. Do this for both sides and then fold the whole unit in half just like that. You can grab some clips to keep it together. And now I'm gonna go sew along all of the edges of this handle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have this top stitch, now it says to fold each edge back by about a half of an inch. So on the back side, I'm going to mark one inch from the short edge and just use my air erasing marker to draw a line and do this on both sides. If you wanna use some fray check or anything here, you can definitely do that. The pattern suggests you actually use some glue to glue this down. I'm just gonna fold it down and clip. And I think that will hold it in place enough for now. But yeah, especially with this water resistant canvas, you might wanna use some fray check on the ends or even you could use your glue. For example, Beacon 3-in-1 glue is my go-to glue. And you could use your glue to glue this down so just a little bit along the inside there. And you can even put a little bit of glue right on the edge. And that glue will just kind of act as a fray check so that it doesn't fray on you. And then fold it back down, add the clips, and then just let that dry. I'll do the same thing on the other side with the glue. And if you have like a little bit of wet glue on the edge here where you added that, that's okay because we're actually gonna just put this down on top of the exterior and no one's gonna see it. The glue might actually help keep it in place even better. So let's set this to the side for just a moment. Now grab your template and your exterior main panel and cut out these little rectangles here. So you see how there's these little dashed lines with rectangles. Go ahead and cut those out with scissors. And then I'm gonna use a stiletto and I'm just gonna trace these little rectangles and what's cool about wax canvas is that just scraping it leaves marks. So you can use this as almost like a marking tool as a pen. So those are the placement marks for our handle. So now grab your handle and you're just going to line it up with those placement marks and just edge to edge, just cover those little rectangles. It's a pretty flat handle. It's not like a puffy handle. So if you're worried like it lays flat, it's supposed to. And if you want, you can grab some tape to really hold this in place while we get it ready. I'm just gonna tape down the centers because we're gonna rivet right here on the edges. So now I'm gonna make a dot that is a quarter of an inch to the right of this fold over here and half of an inch down from either edge. And that's gonna let me know where the rivet goes. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna punch through the exterior and the handle. So if it's easier for you, you can actually punch through the handle first and then lay the handle over and then mark on the exterior where you need to punch the hole and then punch the exterior separately. Or you can just do what I'm trying to do and keep it all together. So do this for both sides. Now grab the medium sized rivets. So these are the larger rivets. And we're just going to snap these through the holes on our folded over edge of our handle and through the exterior. And go ahead and attach it to the back. If you feel like this is a little too loosey goosey, you can grab some exterior material. You can grab a scrap of Decoville light, fusible fleece, something like that. And then add them on the back side of your exterior material between the snaps, just to add a little bit of, a little bit of protection to the material. But I think we'll be okay. All right, so once I have those in place, I can remove the tape. And then I'm gonna grab my rivet press that has the dies for the rivets. And I'll just press these rivets in place. And there you go, your handle is now installed. You can set this to the side. Now let's grab your eight inch zipper and add your zipper pull and then grab a lighter and just melt down the edges of the zipper tape. There we go. That's just gonna prevent the zipper tape from fraying. Now grab your zipper tabs and you're gonna lay the zipper tab right side down on top of the right side of the zipper, lining up the short edge with the raw edge of the zipper tape. You can do this for both sides. And I just like to use clips to hold these together. And now let's sew along both of these edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have these sewn on, flip the zipper over so you're looking at the wrong side and then pull the tab out just like this. Fold the short raw edge of the tab wrong sides together to meet the zipper tape end, just like that. And then fold it again over the back of the zipper. 
So it's just wrapped around like that. It should extend down a little bit further than the front. So where I have it sewn right here on the front, the folded over edge should extend just a little bit further down. And that's gonna make sure that we do catch both sides of this when we sew it. So repeat that with the other side. And now with the zipper tape right side up, let's top stitch along the inner sewn edge over here at an eighth inch seam allowance on both sides. So now let's make the divider pocket. So we're using clear vinyl. Clear vinyl is a little sticky, it's a little tricky. If you wanna use quilt cotton or water resistant canvas, it's gonna be easier. But I am gonna show you how to do this with the clear vinyl. So the first thing we wanna do is mark the midpoint on both sides of our zipper tape by just folding it in half and then pinching the center and you can cut it if you'd like or you can use a marking pen and just mark the midpoint on both sides. And then we're gonna mark the midpoint on our clear vinyl as well. So I'm just gonna fold that in half, short sides together, and then pinch, and I'll use my silver ink pen to mark the midpoint on this one. So I'm gonna do this for both pieces of clear vinyl. And now take one piece of the clear vinyl and lay it right side up. If, if your clear vinyl has a print or something, you want it right side up, and then grab your zipper and lay your zipper right side down and then match up the midpoint marks on the zipper and the panel and clip together at the midpoint marks and then clip along the top edge. The zipper does not come all the way to the edges of the pocket, it's not supposed to. Even with the adjustments we're making, this is still, this is still gonna work out good. So now it's sew along this top edge here at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have it sewn down, let's just flip the panel the clear panel down like this and fold it over. Now I know this is tricky. This is not how I normally do clear vinyl on zippers, but it is very common to do it this way. I just know it's tricky for me. What I'm trying to do is just flatten this out and fold down the clear vinyl right where I sewed it on the zipper. And then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance right from this fold of the clear vinyl all the way end to end. All right, so one side is attached. We're gonna repeat that with the other side. So take the opposite clear panel and lay it right side up and then grab your zipper and lay it right side down and let's match up the midpoint marks first and then just clip the zipper to the top of the remaining panel. And then let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along that clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn on, once again, we're going to just fold this clear panel back so that it's right side up and then I just add a couple clips to the very end because clear vinyl doesn't fold well. So I can only add it here. If you wanted to use double-sided tape along the bottom edge down here and then fold your clear vinyl back, you could do that. But I'm just gonna hold it in place and go to the sewing machine and top stitch right along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so this is what our clear panel now looks like. So we're just gonna fold it in half, wrong sides together. So the zipper is right side out and then line up the short edges and clip these short edges together. Do this for both sides. And now let's go to the sewing machine and sew along both of these short edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. There we go. And if your stitches are a little messy, don't worry about this. These right here will be covered up by the gusset later. Now, find the midpoint along the bottom raw edge of your clear pocket. And you can mark it with scissors by cutting it like a little tiny bit, or you can mark it with your marking tool like a silver ink pen. And then grab your two base panels, and you can just grab one of them and mark the bottom of one of your base panels on the long raw edge, the midpoint on the long, long edge. So now take your clear pocket and lay it so that the bottom raw edge lines up with the edge of the base panel and line up at the midpoint marks. And then you can clip those together. And if you wanna quickly take this to the machine and base this in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, you can do that. Or you can then just grab your other base panel and lay it over the pocket so it's like a little sandwich. Just make sure you're lining it up corner to corner with the base panel that's already clipped in place. All right, now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have that sewn, you can just trim the corners down on the seam allowance, this will just help later. And now the pattern suggests pressing open this seam down here that includes the base panels and the pocket panel and then top stitching on both sides. However, since I have this plastic vinyl, 
Um, it's gonna be very difficult, if not impossible, with just the quarter inch seam allowance to do that. So I'm not going to be top stitching along the sides. I'm just gonna leave it like this. So now you can put this to the side. So now grab your gusset panels and divide them into two and two. So then take two of them and lay them right sides together, making sure the curved edges are matching up and the straight bottom edges are matching up and then clip together. Do this for the other set of gussets as well. So now let's take these to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew along the curved top edge and the bottom straight edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna do this for both of them and make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end each time. So once those are sewn, I'm just gonna clip down the corners on the seams on all four corners for each of these little gusset combos. And now turn these gussets so that they are right side out, being gentle that you don't rip anything. All right, once you have them turned right side out, you can press them with an iron. I actually just like to kind of roll out the seams with my fingers and then use clips to flatten them out. So I'm gonna do this for the top and the bottom of each gusset, making sure to keep the curve on the top part. Once you have these flattened out, we wanna top stitch along the top and bottom edges of each of these gussets at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can also top stitch along the sides if you'd like, just to keep everything neat and in place. your gussets are now done and ready to go let's put these to the side now let's work on the slip pocket so take your two slip pocket cuts and lay them right sides together and then clip along the top edge and now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end and now I'm just gonna clip the corners along the seam just at a 45 degree angle now open this up and you can grab an iron if you'd like but what we want to do is we want to press these two panels wrong sides together and make sure that top seam is nice and straight and flat. And now let's top stitch along that seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab one of the front or back panels and lay it right side up and then take your slip pocket that you just made and lay it right side up, lining it up on the sides and the bottom. And now let's baste along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And now with the slip pocket, if you wanna add a little snap here, you can. I'm gonna leave it as just a slip pocket, but that's how easy it is. The slip pocket's the easiest one, so if you just wanna add two of those and then be done with the inside of the bag, then do that. But let's put this to the side. Now grab the cut for the elastic pocket and fold it wrong sides together, long sides together, and clip along this long raw edge to hold them in place. And now I'm just gonna press this down with my fingers like this. There we go. So now along the top fold over here, we're gonna sew a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Now we're gonna sew along the bottom raw edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you're gonna sew at a basting stitch length, which is like four to five millimeters, and then leave a couple inches of the bottom and top threads on each side after you're done sewing. Now grab your piece of elastic and a safety pin. Just attach the safety pin to one edge of your elastic just like that, and then insert the safety pin into the top folded seam. So you should have just enough room to push that safety pin in there, and then just push the safety pin through that top seam all the way to the other end. And as you're doing this, make sure that this tail of your elastic doesn't get lost in there. So as it gets closer to the edge, I like to have it hang out just a little bit, like a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch, and then add a clip to the end of the elastic so I know it won't get sucked in. And then continue pushing all the way to the other end. Once you pull out the safety pin, you can remove it. And then again, be careful here not to lose it inside of there. And add a clip over here as well to keep it in place. And now what I'm gonna do real quick is just stitch right along the top edge here where my elastic is stitching over the material to hold the elastic in place so I don't end up losing the elastic by it being eaten by the material. And I'm just gonna do that in an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm gonna grab my remaining front back panel and lay it right side up. And you'll notice that the elastic pocket on the bottom is wider than it needs to be. And that's where we're gonna grab, you can grab either the top thread or the bobbin thread and just slowly start pulling on it and 
pulling the material by bunching it a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right. And just make sure you move the material over. And we're just gathering right here on the bottom edge. So do a little bit of it and then check and see. Okay, it's still too wide. And what we're trying to do is gather it so that it's the same width as this bottom edge of the front or back panel. So once I've got it smaller than it needs to be, I'm gonna clip the bottom left corner in place. And then I'm also gonna clip along the left side over here. And then I'm just gonna kind of stretch the bottom here so that the bottom right corner can come to meet the bottom right corner of the front back. Again, just give it a little, little stretch and then clip the right side as well. And then once you have it gathered, go ahead and just clip along the bottom edge. If you're using the water resistant canvas, you're gonna have some folds and some pleating. That's okay, it's supposed to be like that. It gives it a, gives it a bunched up look. So now let's go to the sewing machine and sew along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And there you go, your elastic pocket is now done. So now take your back, your base, and your front panels, and we're gonna sew them together. So with the base right side up, and this is how I like to do it, with the zipper going towards the left when closed, I'm gonna lay my base just like this, working on this top base panel, and then I'm gonna grab my slip pocket, I'm gonna lay these right sides together, matching up the two long edges, and clip in place. And now I'm gonna grab my ruler, and I'm gonna measure a quarter of an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from the left side. So a quarter of an inch in and down. And I'm doing this on the back of my slip pocket panel. And I'm just gonna mark a dot. And I'm doing this on the other side as well. Just a quarter of an inch down and a quarter of an inch in. And then I'm also going to mark a five inch opening centered along this clipped edge. And now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and starting at that first mark, that little dot right there, we're going to sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance until we get to the mark for the opening. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and then also once you get to the opening, lift your needle up, jump over the opening and then continue sewing at a quarter of an inch down from the mark over here all the way to the little dot at that quarter of an inch mark right here. Backstitching all the time you're stopping, but don't sew in this opening here. All right, so once that's attached, this opening here we'll be using later to turn everything out. So now we're gonna flip this around and we're gonna work on the other side of the base panel. So lay that right side up and then grab your elastic pocket and lay that right side down, lining up the bottom of the elastic pocket with the long edge of the base panel and clip together. And just like before, we're going to measure a quarter of an inch down and a quarter of an inch in and mark a dot. We're gonna do this on the top left and the top right corners. I'm just marking it on the back of the front back panel. And this time we're just gonna sew from dot to dot at a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, so now you have your full bottom panel and then grab your gussets and then grab your wings and make sure you have the template here because we're gonna be marking some spots on these wings. So now grab your gussets and let's just press them so we can press the midpoint just like this. You can press them with an iron if you'd like, or just your fingers. Just wanna know where that middle is now before we sew it all together. So now, let's see, we have an outside of the gusset and an inside of the gusset. You want the inside of the gusset to go down against the lining pocket, and then we're gonna look at the bottom straight edge of our gusset, and it should come up just above the seam. So it's not gonna go right on the seam, we're not gonna add bulk by sewing this over the seam. It should just, just float just above that seam and line up the edges here and clip in place. So it says about a 16th of an inch, but I just make it so that it's just above the seam right here, just a, just a scotch. And then grab one of your wings and you're gonna lay your wing right side down. So the top of the wing is a flat cut. So over here we have like a diagonal cut. The top of the wing is a flat cut and that's gonna go right side down over our gusset. And I'm gonna line up the top corner of my wing with the top corner of the main panel here and clip together. And then I'm just gonna line it up along the edge over here and add it to the clips I already have for the gusset. And then on the bottom corner here of my wing, I'm gonna measure a quarter of an inch in from the left and a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. And I'm just gonna mark a dot with my silver pen. 
And where you mark that dot should be like right at the seam between the main panel and the bottom panel. I know it's a lot, it's a lot. Look at the instructions, but there's a lot going on here. I understand that. So now we're gonna sew from the very top corner down till we meet that dot at a quarter inch seam allowance and make sure you backstitch the beginning and also at the dot. Okay, this gets a little tricky, but what you wanna do is press this seam allowance open as much as you can. Not, not every seam has to be pressed completely open. So just press it open. So for me, I'm just gonna take the wing, the wing panel seam and fold that back on itself and that will be good enough. So now open up the wing, open up the gusset Again, just work to press the seam open as best you can. So you can see here's the back here. I, I am trying to separate the gusset and the slip pocket seams. It doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry about it. But I have this open so that the wing and the gusset are away. And now I'm gonna top stitch along the inner edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, trying to catch that seam that's behind it to the best of my ability. And we're just gonna go from the bottom all the way until we get to the seam. Don't go over the seam though. All right, once that's top stitched, you're gonna take your gusset and you're gonna fold it in just like that. So we have the wing out and the gusset in. And again, just smoothing out that back seam there. Now we're gonna top stitch along the gusset at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and only come down to the seam once again. So only come down to the bottom of the gusset. Don't extend the top stitching over the raw edge of your wing over here. You're not going that far. You're just going from all the way from the top down to bottom where the gusset seam starts and stops. Alrighty, so this is what you should have. You have your wing, you have your gusset. When it folds, it folds in just like this. And eventually this will wrap around. You see it coming together? So now we're gonna repeat that for the other three quarters. I know it takes a little bit of time, but once you get the hang of it, it starts to move quicker. So let's go to the left side over here. And we're gonna grab our other gusset, because remember this gusset attaches to the bottom, not this side, that would be weird. And remember you have an exterior and an interior cut. So if they're different fabrics, the outside and the inside. The inside cut is gonna go right side down with the rounded edge on top. And then again, just smooth out this seam down here and just hover the bottom edge of the gusset so that it's about a 16th of an inch above the seam. The biggest thing you wanna make sure of is that you're not sewing the gusset over that seam. So we're just gonna clip this in place and then we're going to grab one of our wings. And again, remember the top of the wing is the flat corner, not the angled corner, flat corner. And then I'm just gonna line up the top of the edge with the top corner of my main panel, clip together, and then just include this in the clips I already have holding the gusset in place. And then just like before on the bottom left corner here, I'm measuring a quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch up and marking a little dot that just tells me where I'm gonna start and stop sewing. And now we're gonna sew along this from the very top down to the dot at a quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching at both the end and also at that dot. Okay, once you have that, let's flip this over and at the back again and let's press the seam open however you can. So I'm just gonna go along the bottom here I'm pressing the gusset seam towards the right where the wing is, and then the panel with the slip pocket towards the left, just as best you can. It's messy, that's okay. So now flipping this back over, we're gonna have the wing go out and the gusset go out, and we're gonna top stitch along the inside here on the main panel at a eighth of an inch seam allowance, all the way from the top down to where the seam is. Don't go further than the seam though. All right, and once that's top stitch, move the gusset towards the right so it's covering the pocket. Flatten out that seam once again, and now let's top stitch along the wing at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And again, stop when you get to the bottom where the gusset is. So don't go further than the bottom of that gusset. All right, we have one side done. Let's do the same thing for the other side. So now we're going to work on the gussets being pulled up. So let's start on the right side over here. This is for the elastic pocket. I have the elastic pocket right side up. And then I'm going to take my gusset and pull it. So remember the inside part of the gusset is gonna go right sides together with that elastic pocket. I'm trying to do this so you can still see it. It's a little tricky. So just like before, the bottom straight edge of the gusset is gonna hover just above the seam between the elastic pocket and the base panel. Here we go, I'm just gonna there we go, now we'll just clip this along the edge. Take one of your wing cuts and you're gonna lay it right side down. Again, the flat edge goes to the top corner of your front or back panel. 
and I like to clip there first and then just clip it along the sides. Don't forget to mark your little quarter of an inch dot on the bottom right corner here. Clip it all together. And now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance all the way from the top down to the dot, back stitching at the beginning and the end. All right, let's flip it over and just press the seam open however you can get it. If most layers have to go to one side and only one thing can go to the other side, that's fine. Don't make this more trouble than it needs to be. Just press it as well. And if you don't catch it when you're top stitching, that's okay too. It's gonna turn out great. I know, it seems very intimidating to do this, but it's gonna turn out great. All right, so I've got this pressed as much as I can. I'm gonna flip this back over. Wing goes out, gusset goes out, and I'm gonna top stitch right along the seam where the elastic pocket is at an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the very top all the way until I get to the seam between the base panel and the pocket, and then I'm gonna stop there. Alrighty, now take the gusset and pull it in towards the inside. I know it's getting a little hard because everything's attached, but take the gusset and pull it in. Flatten out the seam again as much as you can. And now let's top stitch right along the wing from the top all the way down to the bottom of the gusset at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, one more to go. So once again, grab the gusset. So on this time on the left side, make sure this is the inside here. And the inside's gonna go right sides together with the elastic pocket, hovering the bottom edge of the gusset just above the seam down here. And then clip these together. And then grab your last wing. Again, flat cut goes on the top. Line it up with the top left corner. Clip together and then clip it along this left side over here. And then don't forget to mark your little quarter inch in and up dot down here on the bottom left corner of your wing. And now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance going from the dot all the way to the top back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now spread open that seam on the back however you can get it. Don't think about it too much. There we go. And now open up the gusset and the wing and on the side where the pocket is, we're gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the top all the way down to the seam, connecting the elastic pocket with the base panel. Once you have that top stitch, move the gusset in towards the center of the bag. And then we're gonna top stitch along the wing at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, going from the top down to the bottom where the gusset is. Alrighty, the majority of the inside is good to go. Let's add the zipper. So now let's add the zipper pulls. So you're gonna add one zipper pull to one end and then the other zipper pull to the other so that when they close, they meet each other. And if your zipper tape is longer than 22 inches, that's good too. The, I feel like with this, kind of the longer the better. Um, attaching the zipper to everything is kind of tricky. This is probably the hardest part of the bag. So now take your long zipper and let's find the midpoint. So just match up the ends, and it doesn't matter if it's longer than 22 inches, that's okay. Just match up the ends, and let's find the midpoint. I'm gonna mark on my zipper tape with my silver pen here so I don't lose it. I'm gonna set that to the side for just a moment because I don't want to forget to add my bag tag. So I'm gonna take my main panel, my main exterior panel, and I'm gonna look at the side that doesn't have the handle, and I'm gonna mark the midpoint along the top straight edge of this side. I'm gonna get my little cute bag tag here and a piece of double-sided tape. Just add the tape to the back of the tag so it makes it a little bit easier to attach it. And then I'm gonna measure down one inch from that midpoint mark along the top edge here. And then I just centered my tag one inch down from the middle and now I'm just gonna go stitch this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now we have the exterior, we have the lining, and we have the zipper. These are our last things. We just gotta put it all together. So let's start with the lining and let's mark the midpoint on the top straight edge on the front and back panels. All right, so since those are marked, make sure you have the midpoint marked on your zipper tape and also the midpoint marked on the top edges of your exterior panel as well. All right, so starting with the lining, with the slip pocket at the top here, just like that, I'm gonna lay my lining panel right side up, and then I'm gonna take my zipper and lay it right side up as well and match up the midpoint marks and clip those together. And now I'm just gonna clip my zipper along this top straight edge. And then once I get to the seam between the main panel and the wing, I'm gonna angle off my zipper. And if you need to, you can make the teeniest little cut, just like an eighth of an inch cut in your zipper tape, right at where that seam is, so that it's a little bit easier to bend the zipper, so that it can then turn and follow 
the straight edge of our wing all the way off. And so the zipper should run off the edge, all the way off the edge. That's how it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna do this on the other side as well. So just starting with the middle straight edge. And then once I get over to the seam between the main panel and the wing, I'm gonna make a teeny tiny cut in my zipper tape. And that's gonna allow me to bend the zipper tape just slightly so that I can then clip it to the angle on my wing all the way down. All right, so we're gonna baste down this zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to the side of the lining. So now lay your panel right side up, zipper right side up, grab the main exterior panel and lay it right side down and we want the handle side to go against the top panel here where we've already attached the zipper and just line it up. I like to start corner to corner. We're just gonna line this up with the lining panel. So you can start with the corners and then clip along the top straight edge and then clip down the sides, making sure you're always tucking in the zipper. Clip down the sides so that it's attached to the wings. So now grab your pattern piece for the main exterior and you see these little dots over here, make sure you mark a hole. So just use like your stiletto and pop a hole through those dots. And you can just line up the corners with the back of your main panel here and then grab a marking tool and just mark a dot through those holes. We're just trying to transfer those marks to our material. So do it on the left and then do it on the right. All right, so this is easier to do if you open your zipper. If you are gonna open your zipper, be careful. You might wanna add a clip to the end of each side of your zipper tape so that you don't lose your zippers. That's why I said it's nice if the zipper tape is even longer than they suggest because then you can really have the zipper overhang and keep these zipper pulls out of the way. But now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance from one dot all the way up to the other dot. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. One side is attached, now we have to repeat that with the other side, and so you will need to open this zipper up in order to do that. So get those zipper pulls down to the edge of the zipper tape without losing them. Here we go. So now let's rotate this. So we have the elastic pocket up here, and we have the other piece of our zipper tape. We're just gonna pull this up and match up the midpoints and clip along the midpoints, and then just clip all the way along the edge, starting with just that top straight edge in the center. Don't forget if you need to, you can make a teeny tiny cut in your zipper tape to help it bend at this corner here, and then just clip it down to the wings. All right, once you have it clipped, let's baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I know there's a lot of stuff happening here. Just do your best to keep everything out of the way. Take your exterior and bring it up, right sides together with the zipper, and let's just clip along that zipper tape. Once you have it clipped, or before you have it clipped, it's probably easier before you have it clipped, but I always wait till the last minute. I'm gonna grab my pattern piece again, and I'm just gonna mark these little dots on the corner on the back of my main panel, because that tells me where to start and stop sewing. All right, so now we're just gonna sew from one dot to the other at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at both of your dots. All righty, main parts are done. So now before we move on, go to each one of your little corners here and just cut like a little notch. Just, just a little little cut about halfway through the seam. This will just help it lay flat. So, oh, you guys, look what I did. I lost my zipper. That happens. But luckily I know how to attach a zipper. So I'm gonna reattach this. 
So I honestly, it's better for you to sew over these zipper ends. We'll probably go do that instead of using clips because especially with these zipper pulls, they're pretty big and heavy. So clips are the way to go. But anyways, I'm just gonna go back to cutting my little notches into each corner. All right, so now I'll go to the sewing machine real quick and just stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance right over the ends of my zipper tape just to try to prevent the zippers from coming off because it's gonna get a little bit trickier. All right, let's close up these sides now. So let's start with one side of the zipper. Pull your zipper closed about an inch in, which I know is a little tricky to do. Just do your best, move everything out of the way, get that zipper inside the bag away from where we're gonna be sewing. It's tricky. If you wanna grab a safety pin, you can grab a safety pin and put it right here to help block it. So now, looking at the exterior main panel, fold the panel in half, lining up these corners here so you can mark the midpoint on the bottom edge of your main panel. And you're gonna bring that midpoint up to meet the right side of your zipper and just clip that in place. And now fold out the sides here so that the two angles from that corner on the main panel come together and line up perfectly. You're gonna have to kind of finagle it and move it around quite a bit, but just work it so that these come together, right sides together. So do both sides. You'll notice the more you pull on this, the more that zipper wants to creep up, but we gotta keep it down. So just looking at the zipper teeth, we're gonna sew over the zipper teeth right here with the main panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but only over the zipper teeth and main panel, nothing on the lining side. Okay, so now looking at it from the bottom of the zipper, let's make sure that the main body is still clipped nice and straight along the edges. We're not working on the lining yet, so don't worry about those. Now, folding the lining out of the way, we're gonna sew along these little winged clip corners here at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have the main part done, take the seam that's between the two bottom base panels and bring that up to the back of the zipper, lining it up with the zipper tape and clip it up there and then straighten out the wings and the base and clip those together. Do this on both sides. Okay, so now we have our clipped lining and we have our sewn exterior. And now what we're gonna do is just kind of push the gusset seam, push that seam down, and we're gonna line up the clipped lining with the exterior that we've already sewn and clip it all together, nice and flat. So I'll show you. Here it is all clipped together on one side and here it is on the other side, not clipped yet. We have sewn edge and we have the lining clipped edge. So we're gonna clip all of it together. There we go. Now it's all clipped together. That zipper is still trying to get in there, but just keep an eye on it. So now we're gonna flip this so the main body is facing up. And now we're just gonna sew it a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Go right over the stitches or just to the left of them. Just a the scotch to the left of the stitches along this entire clipped edge. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, I know that's a little complicated, but we got one side done. Now we're gonna repeat that for the other side. I'm gonna walk you through it because I know I got thrown around with that one. So let's start with this other side. Once again, I'm looking at the back of the main panel. I'm gonna match up these corners here. And then I'm just gonna pull on it because I'm trying to find the midpoint on the bottom of our main panel. I'm just gonna use scissors to clip that so I know where it is. And then I'll pull this up so that it's right size with the right side of the zipper. And then line up that midpoint mark with the zipper teeth. Add a clip there. Then I'm gonna pull along the sides over here to straighten out the little shorter boxed corners here. Again, this is on the main panel, not the lining. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take this to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew over the zipper teeth right here, just the main panel and the zipper teeth and that's it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And once that's tacked down, I'm gonna go sew along each of these little clipped wings at a quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching over the edges and just going up to the zipper each time or you can just sew a full quarter inch seam allowance if you're more comfortable doing that. You might find it easier to look at the lining while you're doing that so that way you can keep the lining kind of folded out of the way like that. Just a quarter inch seam allowance along this edge. Now that we have that sewn, we're looking at the lining side once again. So you can bring your lining up so that the seam that connects the bases matches up with the back of the zipper tape. And just clip that there and then work on your wing. Make sure you tuck anything out of the way that needs to be tucked out of the way. If you have a pocket that's trying to get in there, move it out of the way. And let's just clip these bases to the wings, lining up those short edges. Do this on both sides. And then once you have that clipped, 
Over here, the seam that holds the gusset, we're gonna just tuck that in down like that so that we can just align the clipped edge with the already sewn exterior edge and clip them together. So do this, so this is the side here where I've got both the exterior and the lining wings clipped together. Here's a side over here where they're not. And again, just tuck in that gusset seam so it doesn't get in our way. And then clip the exterior and the lining together. All right, then we're gonna flip this over, looking at the back of the main panel, and we're gonna sew along this edge, just going right over the stitches, or just a little bit to the left, a little bit inside, um, at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so through that opening that we left right here, we're going to flip this whole unit right side out. And as you flip this out, let's make sure we smooth out the material by the zipper. So once you have it all flipped out, what we wanna do now is top stitch by the zipper. So depending on your material, you can press this with an iron or just use your fingers. Wax canvas is nice because you can really kind of mush it around to get it the way you want it. But we're gonna go to the sewing machine and just top stitch along both sides of the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, we've got it top stitched. Now, before we do the sides with the gusset, I'm gonna just close up this hole real quick because it is distracting me. So what you wanna do is just fold in your raw edges by about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I uh, don't measure it. If it's a little bit more than that, I think you're okay. This isn't going to affect the outside shape of the bag and it's not going to affect the look of it or the usability of it. So just fold it in so that the raw edges are tucked in there and clip your pocket and base panels together. Pattern suggests hand sewing this. Hand sewing will give it a very nice professional finish. But I'm going to sew it with my machine. And then I also have a little Oakle Roots tag here. This is not part of the kit or anything, it's just my own, but this is where I'm going to put it. So, you know, you know I made it. All right, I'm just gonna tuck that in there. And now I'm gonna sew right along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. All right, so now all we have to do is attach the gusset to the center pocket. So move your zipper to the center here, find that middle fold, and you're just gonna fold this gusset around the center pocket. So I'm gonna start at the bottom down here, fold it around and add some clips all the way to the top. It does extend above the pocket, which is okay. Okay, now taking this to the sewing machine, you'd like to sew this at about a quarter inch seam allowance. It might be tricky to do because of the bag, so you just sew what you can. Just sew as much of this as you can. If you can't go all the way down to the bottom, that's fine. No one's ever gonna see it down here, but just sew as much as you can at a quarter inch seam allowance along the side. All right, so we've got one side done. Let's flip this around and do the other side as well. And I'm gonna turn it on its side. Find that middle fold, start clipping it from the bottom up to the top. And then on this side, once again, quarter inch seam allowance as far as you can get it, as much as you can get it. If you can't get it all the way to the top because it's really bulky right here, that's fine. Don't worry about going over the top. If you can't get all the way to the bottom, that's fine too. Alrighty, so if you have any little loose threads hanging off, this is where it's a good time to grab your lighter and just melt down those little threads to clean it up. And then these are optional, but I'm gonna use them. We have these small rivets, which are so cute. And let's see, where should we put these? I think I'm gonna put them, I think I'm actually gonna put mine right at the top because I have a lot of overhang on the top here and on, on another bag I did, I didn't have this much overhang. So I'm going to put this about a quarter of an inch from the top and about half of an inch in from the edge. I'm just gonna grab a marking tool and mark my dots. Maybe a little bit closer to the seam. Maybe more like three-eighths of an inch from the edge. And you can attach your rivets wherever. If you want to attach them further down so that they also go through the plastic, you can do that. Right now where they're going, they're only going through the gussets. They're not going through the clear pocket at all. I'm gonna use my handheld hole punch for this because it's easier. I'm just gonna punch out the hole, making sure I'm not punching through any stitches. That's the big thing. You don't want to punch through any stitching. 
And I'll take these smaller rivets and just pop them through those holes. That's a cute little look, isn't it? And then I'll grab my press. I don't have a smaller die on the press right now, but I can be careful and press this. So I'm just gonna press both these rivets down. All right, let's see what it looks like. I haven't zipped it up yet. All oh, these zip holes are, are loud. So take your time, go through and poke out all your corners to try to get the shape right. And if you use like a foam, I mean, even a Decoville light would help with structure. If you want this to have really, really firm structure, use some stabilizer with it. And here we go. How cute is that? Look at this little, this little cube. It's so cute. And it's such a cool shape. So when we open it up, you think it's a box, but then it opens flat, which is so cool. And we have that plastic clear pocket in the center. I hope you guys love making this. This was a fun one. Okay, guys, what do you think? The thing I like about this bag, because like I said, there are different versions of this same type of structure, same type of shape out there, but the thing I see with this one that's different than the others is that there's no binding. There's no binding in this bag. It is a birthed bag. You don't have to worry about that. So for those of you guys who are like, I just hate binding so much, you don't have it in this bag. I honestly, this one was a little tricky to get through the first time just because it is such a different type of design than I'm used to. There's a lot of really, really helpful techniques that Love You So has in this pattern, but it was not something I've done before. So it did take me a little bit of time to really go through the pattern and understand what I was doing. And I had a lot of moments where I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't think I'm doing this right. And then in the end, it all came together. But once I made it once, I got it, I had it done, and I could just whoop, I mean, I made three of these, I could easily quickly make more of these. This is one of those, one of those patterns, you can make a lot of these. And I know that it's summer and nobody's thinking about the holidays unless you are a crafter. Uh, but if you're thinking about gifts and you wanna get started right now before holiday season creeps up on us, this is a great holiday gift. This is something you could give to anybody, just depending on the material you're using. It is a great bag for literally everybody. So I hope you love making this as much as I do. I'm gonna be making a lot more of these. I think I'm definitely gonna make one for my husband for when he has to travel for work. I definitely am making them for the kids because they've already been begging me asking for these for their craft supplies, which means then I'll probably be making them for friends as well. So thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.